Today in part three of a Blender to Painter workflow, creating realistic wax candle assets for Unreal Engine 4, I'll show you an option for setting up a material in Unreal with the textures we created in Painter. Now that I'm satisfied with these textures, I'll open up the export dialog under File, Export Textures. In the drop-down menu, I'm going to pick the config format that I want to use. There are a number of preset configurations available by default, but I usually need a custom config to bake the exact maps I need. Under the Configuration tab, you see the setup for each of the presets. You can also right-click and copy an existing preset and modify it as needed. This UE4 config is the one that I set up with the typical roughness, metallic, normal, ambient occlusion, and base color maps that most of my Unreal assets will require. To set up a brand new export config, press the plus icon and select the new export preset. As the dialog says, you'll drag and drop maps from the right panel into the output channel on the left, but first you'll need to enable an output map with the necessary properties. I like to refer back to other presets to remind myself which maps are required for which channels. For example, this Unity 5 preset has an RGB plus alpha for albedo with transparency, plain RGB for normal and emission. To create a new output slot, click on the map button here. This is where you drag the input map like so. There's no alpha input in this project because I haven't enabled alpha in my texture set settings. I did enable transmissive, however. That's the main difference between my typical export config and the one I set up for meshes with a transmissive map. As you can see here, I created an RGB output and dropped the transmissive input into the slot. For my texture names, I've copied the project name formatting expression and added the underscore first initial identifier that my team uses in our internal texture naming convention. Once your export config is set up, go back to the export tab and find your preset from the drop down list. Opening up the texture sets, you'll see the textures you're about to bake named as you have indicated. Our team exports to PNG in 8 bit, and for export, we bump it up to 4K. You could click Export Now, but seeing the document size set at 2K reminds me that I haven't baked my 4K maps, which I promised to show you early on. Once you're done experimenting and can afford the slowdown of rendering multiple 4K textures, go back to your baking window, increase the output size to 4K, and rebake. This can take upwards of 5 minutes on a complex mesh, depending on the speed of your computer. Once your bake is finished, go back to File, Export Textures, and reselect your preset config. Now that I've baked my textures, I can move into Unreal. Before I work on the material itself, I import my FBX candle meshes, which I've since assembled into groups with their holders. I'm going to double-click my imported mesh in the content browser to open it up in the mesh editor. You can see that I've already added materials to the mesh and its LODs, but for demonstration I'm going to create a brand new material by navigating to my materials folder and right-clicking in an empty space. Then I double click the new material to open the material editor. From here, I will locate the textures in their folder and drag them into the material editor window. I'm going to start by showing you a way to fake translucency with the default opaque material setup. From here, I start plugging the outputs into the corresponding material slots. I'll be using this transmissive map to fake translucency, so I'll get back to that in a moment. To make it easier to see the changes I'll be making, I like to choose this little option to show material on a mesh. First though, I need to have my mesh selected in the content browser, and then when I set the preview mesh, I click F to focus the view. Now for the magic, I'm going to take my transmissive map and, right-clicking in a blank space to bring up the search box, I'll look for Vector Parameter. 
Selecting this node and clicking on the default value area of the details panel, I'm going to change the color to something bright and obvious for testing with, like green. From here, I'm going to drag out a pin from the output, and since I want to blend this solid color with the base color, using the transmissive map as a mask, I'll use a linear interpolate, or lerp node. So just like I said, I plug the transmissive into the alpha slot here. You can't see what's going on yet, so I'll right click my lerp and choose Start Previewing node. It takes a few seconds to update each change, but now you can see that my green color is coming through the bright parts of the transmissive map. Now I want to add a little control to the contribution of my solid color, so I'll drag out a pin from the lerp and find a multiply node. Dragging a pin back from the input, I can add in a scalar parameter, and this way, if we create another instance of this material, the blend between these two outputs can be adjusted differently for each mesh. I can preview this node and simply change the default value slider in the scalar parameter details until the solid color is where I want it. Clicking in the preview panel to refresh the view, I can also see that the opaque stone areas of the candle are receiving some of the color information from the first lerp. So dragging out from the multiply node, I'll add another lerp, break the link to the A input, and reconnect it to the B, which is set by default to 1. Then I'll drag another pin from the transmissive map to the alpha slot of the lerp which will cleanly mask away all of the opaque areas that I didn't want tinted with the solid color. Previewing this node, you can see now that only the candle wax will receive the color that I'm feeding in, and I can still adjust the amount. We're faking translucency here, not a glow, so I'll keep the effect subtle. I can stop previewing this node and then drag the output pin from the lerp directly into the emissive color slot in the material node. And there you go! Just a hint of emissive color gives these flat textures a little extra depth that makes it look as though light is really passing through the wax. Of course, I don't really want green, so now I'm going to change the color to a warmer sort of amber, and just tinker with the value, and even experiment with leaving out the ambient occlusion map, until I'm satisfied with the look. I can even test out the material on my other candle meshes, which as you'll recall, I atlas onto the same texture map. As promised, I'm going to show you how to set up the material to actually use subsurface scattering as well. With this same basic setup, I'm going to select the material node, and in the material details panel, I'll dig through the drop down menus to find the shading model named subsurface. When the preview pops up, it shows that the emissive fakery I just set up isn't going to work without some adjustment, but we're not far off. In this case, all we really have to do is plug the last lerp into the subsurface color input instead, and break the link with the emissive color input. The scalar parameter works to adjust the effect just as before, and we can even plug the emissive back in if we want a combination of the effects. It's up to you and the limits of your game project. According to Epic's performance guidelines, the subsurface shader model is more expensive than lit, so I offer both these options for you to choose from. Thank you for watching! Please be sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel to see more tutorials like this one, and leave your comments and questions below.